Hello, and welcome to the Rummaging Ferret. So I kind of got my dust cleared off. So what I wanted to talk about today was sketchbooks and the massive array that you can get. This isn't even half of them. Um, there's so many different types of papers and so many different things you can do depending on what paper you have. Um, so I guess I'm just going to start. This is not a sketchbook tour. I just wanted to talk about different papers and sketchbooks that I use. So most people start out with like a sketchbook like this size or, you know, when you're going to school and stuff and you just want to throw it in your, your book bag. Um, and this is a good kind of pencil paper. This is, um, uh, I don't know if they make these anywhere. I've had these for so long. Um, they probably still make these. So this is specifically more for chalk and sketching and pencil, pastels, um, pen too. But the paper is, I want to say, fairly smooth. Um, let's see here. What do I even have in here? This is scary. <laughs> Open up a sketchbook and I don't know what's even in here. Uh, let's see here. Okay, this was probably like high school. High school, early college. Yeah. Um, that's my buddy. That's actually one of my best friends. So this paper is really good for pencil. Um, it does smear um, because of the binding. So bindings are another thing that you need to look at when you're looking at sketchbooks. Um, I always liked perforated pages. I don't so much anymore, but um, one of the good things about perforated pages is that you could stick them in a different book or you could stick them in um, a scanner. You can cut without the perforated edge, just take a blade and go across the edge, but the perforated pages make it nicer. Um, but the spine like this, the wire spine, causes the pages to rub up against one another and causes that with your pencil. With pen, it's not so bad because pen doesn't really smudge or smear so much. Um, but for pencil, which is what this book is designed for, what this book is specifically designed for, sketch, and right in here, pencil, you know, it, it's kind of bad to have that happen and then you could see how cloudy it gets around your illustrations um so this is like one size this is multimedia paper um i'm gonna set that over there so this is also canson i i guess i own a lot of canson products actually i think vast majority of what i own is canson I might have some other brands, but for the most part, I use Canson. Now these are acid-free. They have the perforated edge too, but these are multimedia. So these are good for watercolors, pencils, pens, um, acrylics, paints. Um, and we'll see how good they are for other things too. Um, these are the same sketchbook. It's just in two different sizes. Um, I used to take this to D&D &D all the time. Oh, did I actually finish this one? Oh, I finished it. I ripped a lot of pages out of it, but I did finish this. Oh, I should do a sketchbook tour of this. I've been wanting to do a sketchbook tour, but I didn't think I had one. All right, cool. You might be getting a sketchbook tour of this one day. Soon. I don't know. Um, we'll see. Um, so this... Let's see here. So it takes pencil, but like I said, because of the binding, depending on how often you tote it around, it's gonna smudge and smear a lot. Here, like this. See? But because of the binding, because it's this floppy binding, all this smeared and smudged over here from the landscape over here. So that's, that's a problem. Um, with these. You can use spray fixatives and try to seal this a little bit so that this doesn't happen, 
but it's still, because it's a smooth paper, it doesn't have a lot of um, grit. It's meant to let things slide against it really easy. Um, that causes the transfer of the graphite. Um, now, I have used a variety of materials on these. Um, let's see here. So this, there is a bit of texture on this paper. So that's your colored pencils. Um, these are Prismacolored pencils, which usually blend really easy. Um, and you could tell that I could press harder and get a, not as much texture to the paper to show up. And then I can lessen how hard I press on the, the colored pencil and get um, more of the texture and the white of the paper to show up. Um, this is also colored pencil. Let's see here. What else do I have? Some of these are really terrible. This is also colored pencil. This is marker. Um, I kind of don't like marker on this paper because it absorbs so much of it. Um, I'm used to drawing with markers on something that's more for markers or more for pens, um, which is super smooth. Um, and it's almost like a wet paint on that kind of a surface. And I'll show you what I mean soon. But like I said, this is the multimedia paper and it really, it soaks in that ink from the markers so much. Um, and I can't remember if this is, this is probably Copic markers. Um, and this too, um, that it just absorbs it so much that it doesn't leave room to really mix the colors very well. This mul multimedia paper, that's colored pencil too. Um, these are marker. These are probably just microns that I used for this, or it was maybe a brush pen that I use that's somewhere. Um, but it takes up ink really well. Um, but you could see how that bleeds through. So I actually used, these are, these are Copics, right? These are alcohol-based markers. And these are brush pens and all that. Um, but when you use them, the paper absorbs them really, really, really too well. Um, and it doesn't give you a lot of time to blend it together. Um, and what happens is it bleeds through on this paper really bad to the point where it goes through two pages of me trying to blend that. So that soaked through two pages while I was trying to get that to blend to be that nice. And I was testing blending here as well. Um, and it just, it seeped through the other pages. So, um, for alcohol-based markers, it's okay. It's going to bleed through. Um, it usually takes, that's with most papers. Um, it's going to bleed through for alcohol-based markers. Um, and here's like a micron test. It takes pen just fine. Um, and that's more alcohol markers, Copics, you can see how it goes through paper. But this time, because I wasn't trying to blend them as much, it didn't go through as badly. There's a couple specks here and there, but it didn't bleed through as bad. I actually made the sticker. They're up in my Etsy shop, uh, the Rummaging Ferret on Etsy. So you can feel free to check that out. If you go to my wet, uh, my main page on YouTube, it's up in the top corner of the web browser, I guess. Um, that's actually done with marker and Copics, um, or that might actually be a black Copic that I used for that. Um, and these are all Copics. Um, and you can see how much they bleed through. Um, let's see here. Yeah. See how the Copics bleed all the way through. These are Prismacolor markers. 
to these guys. Prismacolor Premier brush tip markers. Um, and I was just toying around with them just to see if they would bleed through or not. Now, I don't think these are alcohol based. I think that these are water based. Light fasting, archival quality, um, acid free. Some pretty, yeah. I'm gonna go and say that these are water-based markers or some other chemical, because usually Copic's, Copic markers tend to fade. Um, they're not really super permanent. So if you do work with markers like that, I would suggest scanning your stuff so it stays at the quality that you know and love because it's gonna fade over time if you don't. Um, but as you can see, on the next page, it didn't bleed through, which is also another telltale sign of like a water-based marker um, or something else. I'm not quite sure what those markers are made of, but it's definitely not alcohol. Um, as you can tell, it didn't go through. This is the same kind of sketchbook as before, the mixed media. It's just, it's a bigger size and I did more stuff in it. Um, this is watercolor. So all of this is watercolor, and as you can tell, it didn't bleed through to the other side. It does warp the paper. Not gonna lie, it does warp the paper. It's not too bad, though. Um, the paper's not so warped that you can't work with it or deal with it. And like I said, like, look at that. It doesn't really, you can see it if you hold it up to light, but it doesn't, it doesn't quite bleed through. These were marks that were actually made on this page. Um, but like you can see where I did that and you, there's not a trace of it there, right? So like I did this giant blob and on the other side, it's not there. And I was able to use watercolor on the other side and not have it, like you can't see it. It didn't go through. Um, but once again, because of the binding, stuff gets a little bit fuzzy or blurry. Um, because it's not a solid binding like, say, this. So this is going to secure your pages, and it's going to keep your pages from rubbing against each other, and you're not going to end up with dull drawings like that where it's fuzzed out a little bit here and there, or like this. She literally looks like she's got a beard. <laughs> like, you see how bad that is? That was all smudging and smearing from me moving my book, taking my book with me, throwing it in the car, and she literally looks like she's got a beard now. Um, not only that, but it went to the other side. So, yeah, so that's, that's a Copic drawing, and it bleeds through. Um, Alcohol-based markers, and they tend to do that with just about any kind of notebook you could find will do that. Um, for Copics. Any kind of alcohol based marker will do that. I already did that one. So if you want something for alcohol markers or any kind of marker, this is really good. And this. You're going to be looking at like the tracing paper. It's not tracing paper exactly. Uh, architects use this. I don't know how many architects use it nowadays, but um, when I was in school going in for architecture, we used to call this bum wad, um, cause it's like toilet tissue, you know, um, stuff you wipe your bum with, ha ha ha. Uh, but no, we used to call it bum wad um, at one of my schools, the other architecture school that I went to, we used to call it trash paper. Um, but actually the quality with this, with markers, is so good. Um, I know you can see through it. It comes in usually two colors, canary yellow and white. White feels lifeless. I will tell you that right now. Um, but if you like doing white, they have white. I like drawing with canary. Let me see. But the ink sets on top of it. Um, and I use Prismacolor markers with this. I don't remember if I've ever used Copic markers with this, but it won't. I don't think it ever bled through. I never remember it bleeding through. 
and the ink just sits on top of it because it's so smooth and it doesn't soak it in so fast and you can literally smudge it and smear it to how you need it to be to blend colors or to do all sorts of fun stuff with it and I've used Prismacolor markers with it so I've used like these guys so these are Prismas. Um, there's a chisel nib on one end and a fine point on the other. Um, and I used to use these a lot before I discovered Copics. Actually, one of the first Copic markers I got, I actually got from my architectural college in sort of like a starter box, I guess. But anyways, um, and you could draw with Sharpies on this too. I've used Sharpies. I've never really had a problem with it bleeding through. So I use Sharpies with this. Um, this is a white paint pen. Um, and I love these precise V rolling ball pens. I love these. I need to get a new one. That's gross. All right. Um, but you with markers and stuff you usually want to have some kind of white pen for like highlights and stuff like that it ends up being super good at some i don't know about all architecture schools one of the architecture schools that i went to this wasn't necessarily frowned upon they kind of did pinups in a different way a pinup is basically um building like a poster board for your project uh, to present it um, one school I went to, it was pretty much all digital. You went down to Kinko's and had it printed, right? Um, at my first school, we actually manually pinned everything up to show our progress and to show everything. I haven't been through this in a long time. That's a paper bag. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so this is some of the stuff you can kind of do. This was with Prismacolor pencils, no, Prismacolor markers, um, the ones I showed you in that blue bag. And so there's the ink drawing, um, probably done in Sharpie, and then that was the overlay of color. Um, I'm pretty sure these came from books. These are not um, creations that I made necessarily, that I dreamt up. Um, I basically tried to repeat what they did to learn from it. Um, so this probably came from a book. Most of these did. Um, here's another one. This again was also with the Prismacolor markers. Um, and just using a chisel nib to get in there. You could see the streak marks from some of them. Um, Wow, that's a decade ago. Holy smokes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is also the sort of thing you could do with Prismacolored markers on this kind of paper. Because the ink just sits on top for so long, you've got some workability where you can blend, smear, and smudge and kind of layer and figure out what you want to do. And this kind of like tracing paper bum wad is so good for that. Um, this stuff is amazing. And all I did was, this is the canary yellow, and I just taped it to a piece of sketch paper. Um, and I pinned this up for review, um, to show what I had learned from it. There's also, on top of it, you can't hardly see it, but there's very light white colored pencil on there as well. Um, oh, this is also, yeah, it is. This is actually done with, no, that's a different kind of paper. What paper is that? That's a super, oh, that's, okay, that's either vellum or mylar. No, that's vellum. That's vellum. So this is colored pencil on um, vellum. I'm not even sure I still have vellum. I might. Um, Usually it comes in a very big roll. You can get it from certain architectural stores. Blick has it. Um, I don't think Masterpiece Art Supply is still around, but you can get it from them. Um, certain like fine art supply stores will have vellum. 
um, and you can kind of see through it, although I got white backing paper behind it, but it's also a very smooth paper. Um, ink, I used to hate drawing on it for ink, because ink would just go everywhere. It took forever to dry, especially on something like vellum. Ink took so long to dry, by the time you got done doing an architectural drawing, you'd probably smeared half of it. Um, everyone hated working on vellum, um, but it was required, so we did. Um, but most of us hated it. Vellum, as opposed to like mylar, has a little bit more of a paper texture to it. Um, it might also depend on which brand of paper you get to um, when you go to the shop. This has a little bit more of a tooth to it, but not by much. As you can see, you could very minutely see the paper texture in here. Um, you can see it a little bit further down here. Um, but yeah, it's this is a lot smoother, so color pencils work pretty good. Now, I'm actually quite surprised that this has not smudged or smeared a uh, ton. You could see some smudging and smearing, but that's from the colored pencil. Um, when you color with colored pencil, you tend to get little uh, pebbles or flakes that come off your pencil. And then when you end up packing it into something else, it'll like stick to the paper and then it'll like squash and smear. And so that's kind of where I think most of these are. Cause some of these are actually stripes. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm pretty shaky. <laughs> um, but yeah, but back to the marker, like for a lot of this, I just took my finger and went like that and blended it out. Um, with marker, you could do that on this kind of paper, um, and it works really well. Um, and you get your fingers like totally messy. I remember just having blue fingers for a couple days, um, cause I couldn't get the ink off entirely because it like saturated down into like the grooves of my finger um, but it was a lot of fun to work with on this kind of paper and once again this is like bum wad or trash paper you can pick this up at any kind of fine art supply store um, you can look into architectural supply stores um, which are very far and few between but places like Blix Art Supply usually carries it um, what's the other place I used to go to Masterpiece Art Supply? I don't know. I don't remember. There's another place that was in Atlanta that you could go to and get it. Um, so just look for like fine art supply stores and you'll be able to find stuff like this stuff. And it comes in these giant rolls. It'll take you a while to go through it all. But you won't find this at Michael's or you might find some at Hobby Lobby or Hobby Town USA might have it. I think I've seen it there. Um, you could check there too and see. Let's see here. So that's... Marker's really good for architectural drawings and things like that. Um, they're getting away from doing things like this in the architectural world, which is really a shame. Um, a lot of us grew up on this and it was a lot of fun and it helped people visualize what they were doing. Like I said, this is... A lot of these are copies from books that I recreated and drew um, to learn how they did it. I think I can find this book, actually, if you just give me one second, I'll actually give you a reference for this book, which is a really good book. I really recommend it. Oh, it's yellowed. <laughs> um, this is by Wiley Pinting Press, I think is how they call it. Um, Mike W. Lynn... I'm sure that means something. I don't think that's a name. That's probably a title. I'm not positive. But this is full of just different renderings. Um, and some of these are in watercolor. Some of these aren't. I don't remember which drawings are from what book. I've got a lot of different books like this. And there's that house I showed you earlier. Oop, where'd it go? I had that. There it is. That's the house I showed you earlier that I'd done on, uh, 
on the bum wad. I don't know if this is still in print anymore. I do really highly recommend it. Um, and it shows you kind of how to render some stuff. Like trees, people. So instead of, like, today they have you make something in AutoCAD or FormZ or Revit or Rhino, and then you take a, sne a screenshot of it as just kind of like base blocks, I guess. Like, and then you go in and you fill in all your lines and stuff in Photoshop with different photos now is how they're having you do it instead of hand drawing everything like you used to. So you take pictures of people and then you like black them out, do a silhouette, or maybe you fade them out um, so they're not as opaque and you kind of fit them in to make a rendering, right? Um, instead of drawing it like this, you know, people don't do these sorts of drawings anymore and it's a real shame. But I do highly recommend this book. Take a look at it. If you're an architecture student, see if you can get a copy of it. It really is a good book. I don't know if this drawing's in there or not. I can't remember. I think it is. Um, my professor may have given me this drawing to, to try, like a printout. And I wouldn't know where he got it from. He's got so many, so many books. Um, I would think it would be in here, though. It might have been. I want to say it was, but it's been a decade since I did that drawing, so I don't remember. Um, marker paper, I think, is supposed to work a lot like the bum wad does, but it doesn't quite work the same way. Um, it seemed... This almost seems like mylar or vellum. This almost seems like vellum, the way it works. And you can see kind of how splotchy it gets. Um, you could kind of blend it out a little bit, but again, I remember using this and I remember it soaking up that ink so much instead of, I was expecting it to sit on top. Like I was expecting the ink to sit on top and I was expecting to be able to smear it and I really kind of couldn't. Um, it seemed like it absorbed that ink so fast I couldn't do much with it. So for like markers, my choice, my preferred method of drawing with markers, my preferred paper is still going to be the bum wad. Hands down, always probably will be until I find something better. But it doesn't bleed through usually. Um, I don't think I ever remember having a problem with this bleeding through. Uh, you can test it yourself and see if it does. Or actually, let's... We're going to try it right now. We're just going to try it. We're just going to absolutely saturate it and see if it bleeds through or not. Um, where'd I put my blue bag? Oop. Okay, cool. All here and accounted for. Alright, so we're just going to grab one of these, chisel end, and just go to town. You see how it's like you can see the strokes? And that's because it's still wet. It hasn't absorbed yet, so if you want to blend... Let me see if I can find... So if you want to blend on this paper... It does it a lot better because the ink's just... Where'd that orange pen go? Because it's just sitting on top. I don't know where that pen went. I lost my orange. Oh, there it is. And so... It's going to blend a lot better. Because it's literally just sitting on top. So it hasn't dried in. And so... You can smear it in and really kind of get that gradation that you're looking for because it is just sitting on top. 
So that's one of the things that I learned to love about this stuff is that it doesn't sink in. Um, and that's with Prismacolor. I'm gonna assume this works the same. It may not, it may actually bleed through. We're about to find out. Okay, so it bled through a little bit. There's some specs there. And I, I, I went to town on that. That's pretty saturated, you know? Um, but let's try this. Yeah, I have to clean my hand after this. But I would think that Copix would work the same way. You might get a bit more of a bleed through. Yeah. You can see it's just going mixing. That pretty much mixed on the first pass. And alcohol tends to dry pretty fast. Um, but you could see I can yeah, I can't do that now because the alcohol dried so fast. Let me see if I can. Oh, that was not the same marker. Oh well. Yeah, it feels tacky already. Yeah. So alcohol on this paper dries super fast, but it doesn't really bleed through. So, but the Prismacolored pens, markers, these guys, um, stayed wet on this paper for longer and I could smudge it and smear it. And you could see the gradation on this looks so much better. Um, but I love using Bumwad with Prismacolor markers. It's so nice. That first pass almost seemed like it melded together. Oh, it's still wet. Yeah, if you get to it fast enough, it's just not quite the same effect. And it's super tacky already. Like, it was wet as soon as I laid it down, and now it's like... Get that tacky. So I don't know. Verdict's still out for Copix on this paper, but for Prismacolor it works really well. Prismacolor is also a fair bit cheaper than your alcohol-based markers like Copic. So I'm actually gonna stop this video here. Um, I've got a lot of different sketchbooks to go through, some of them cheaper than others with different qualities of paper, as well as watercolor paper and regular printer paper. So it was too much for one video, this one's long as it is, so I'm going to stop it here and make another video for that. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed me and my ferrets, it's free to subscribe. And remember, there's magic in art.